1996, 1996 or 97, I um, went to a retreat. It was a sort of a woman's retreat. At the end of the retreat, the facilitator um, came and spoke to everybody individually. And she sat down and she asked everybody the same question, which was, what are you going to do to make the world a better place when you leave this plane of existence? And I thought about it, and I had just started to learn how to carve carousel uh, figures. And so I told her I'd like to carve a piece for every single island, and then I would donate that piece to the pediatrics ward of a children's, of, of a hospital that had a, the children's ward in it. Um, she looked at me very thoughtfully and then she just said to me, that's not big enough. And then she got up and walked out of the room. What am I supposed to do with that? You know, I didn't understand. Probably maybe a year or so after that, um, uh, I used to come and get my goddaughter. At the time she was about three years old. And we would have a fun day with Auntie. And we would do all the things that Ariel loved to do. She, would, she always wanted to go to the park. She always wanted to feed the ducks. And then we would always go to this family fun center that was located um, in IAEA uh, and Pearl City. And this little fun center had all of the video games and things like that that you know, children love to do, and it had a really, really tiny carousel. But I wanted to give her um, a good memory, kind of like the memories that I had with when my parents would take me to the fair or something like that, and I could ride a carousel. So I picked her up and we went and did all of those fun things, and um, we drove to the Family Fun Center, and she, we, I got out of the car, I got her out of her seat, and we turned around and started walking toward the fun center. And I looked up and the storefront was empty. This is a place that her and I had spent several little play days with Auntie at. I looked up and I looked down at her because I had just um, built up our day, what things we were going to do, and this was like a very important thing for her. She always would get very excited about riding the little merry-go-round. And I looked down at her, her eyes were as big as saucers, and she looked at me and she said, where did it go? And I just thought, I said, oh Ariel, I am so sorry, Auntie is so sorry. Um, I don't know where it went. I said, let's, let's go see if we can find out where it went and we started walking a couple of steps and she pulled on my hand and I turned around and looked at her and she said that's okay auntie we just have to make one and in the back of my head I heard three words and those three words were that's big enough and I know that was the voice of God <laughs> telling me that's what I need to do. So I started, after that, I started um, researching um, what I could do the, to see about creating a carousel. There were a number of places um, uh, on the mainland that were doing just that. Uh, there were community projects. And my dream was to have all of the people who were on that island pick the animals that they wanted to represent their island and they would carve and they would paint those animals and then they would be shipped to a central location for uh, to be installed on the carousel. And it wasn't until I moved to this island and I met some very, very um, excited people about the project. I just kept telling them about what my dream was. And now we have the uh, power um, behind uh, putting this whole thing together. I would have liked to have had this started years ago, but the timing wasn't right and the place obviously wasn't right. So now I have the people behind me who have the same vision and we're hoping to attract the kind of people 
that can believe in the vision. Our key word is imagine. Uh, if you can, in your mind, imagine that sort of a park uh, where you can take your children. We aren't going to tell anybody that they can't be a part of this. There was a group of women from a retirement home that used to come, uh, there were six of them, and they were um, elderly women. Uh, a few of them had severe um, arthritis, and they weren't able to carve, but they still wanted to be a part of the project. They used to come over to the carousel every Saturday morning, and they would come in and they would work for about six hours. And what they did, since they couldn't carve, was they would sand, because they could hold a piece of sandpaper, and they could just sand and sand and sand. And that's like a primary important thing when you're working with the animals. After you get them carved, they need to be sanded really, really fine in order to apply the primer to the piece. So they used to, there were six of them, and they used to bring a little thermos of coffee, their little box of donuts, and they would sit down and they would talk story and drink their coffee and sand and sand and sand till about two o'clock in the afternoon. Then they would all get up and go to their little van and they would all go home. And they did this over a number of um, years. That's what their contribution was. And of course, um, everybody who has uh, worked on the carousel will be acknowledged. Uh, it's, we want everyone to know that they have ownership in this beautiful statewide art project. I think just pride in ownership, you know. I worked on that, one of those is mine. Um, I helped paint that one over there. Um, you know, whatever, there's just uh, a number of opportunities for people to become involved in it. We're going to have things that are particular to the islands. And I think it'll be a really beautiful statement. And I hope I live long enough to see it happen. <laughs> it's a positive activity. I mean, I don't know of anything that could be negative about it. Um, it's a chance for us to teach about Hawaiian culture, uh, to learn about carousels and how they were created a, dec or a century ago. One of my most vivid memories was hanging on to the pole on a, a horse that I was riding on and hanging on really tight and then reaching all the way over and feeling that mane on the horse. It, it's a chance, there's nowhere that I know of that you can go to a museum and you can see art that you, there's little ropes up that keep you from becoming interactive with it. This is perfect, you know, we want the children to ride on it, we want them to feel it. Um, I'm the biggest child of all, when we go somewhere where there's a carousel, I'm on it, just like that. You know, I've already got the one picked out that I'm going to ride. Um, I'm just as big a child as, as all of them. And adults, you know, that brings back a lot of childhood memories for a lot of people who have lived on the mainland, you know, before they lived here in the islands. And it's a chance for us to create those memories with our Hawaiian children, you know, children born in the islands. When they go somewhere else, they can say, oh yeah, I rode the carousel in Hawaii, the carousel of Aloha. It's a Heli Mai Holo Kako. Um, come on, let's go around.